Good day, good day, good day, everybody. Brian here. We are April 6th. Um, April 6th, uh, 3.49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We've got more death knell news to cryptocurrency. Here's the big news. This is from an article. Uh, I think that just went up in the last day. Um, this one is nine hours ago. U.S. SEC Chairman, most crypto tokens are securities. <laughs> oh, this is going to be fun. If you're involved in a Bitcoin or a crypto project, I feel very bad for you because this is not good news, especially if you're in the U.S. So this guy looked like he just walked off a spaceship. Um, <laughs> okay, it goes into the background. He worked at MIT Digital Currency Initiative, blah, 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 blah. So they put the right guy in at the right time. And uh, this is from CryptoNewMedia.Press. Again, I just gave you the article name. Okay. Um, okay, so he says they want to ta target um, crypto trading and lending platforms. Centralized or decentralized DeFi. He is not happy that most tokens being traded are unregistered and likely to be securities. So here in Ontario, um, what started this for me ooh, a month ago was if a crypto exchange like Binance is not registered in Ontario, which they didn't, and they permanently left, it started last year. Then I went to Kraken and um, this would probably Kraken and Coinbase would fall under this definition. So take hold. Um, typical trading platform has dozens of coins on it. In fact, many have well in excess of 100 tokens. Many of the tokens trading on these platforms may well meet the definition of quote unquote securities. Well, each token Legal status depends on its own facts and circumstances. Given the Commission's experience with various tokens that are securities, with so many tokens trading, the probability is quite remotely that any given platform has zero securities. Well, that's not true. Uh, he did say that Ethereum and Bitcoin are not covered here because they're not controlled by a central authority. A good example of that is XRP token which is run by Ripple. So that's why they had the lawsuit. So that's the prime example you can use to showcase what this guy's saying, and he means business. So he, he asked the SEC staff to work on the following platform-related projects. Get the platforms themselves registered and regulated, much like exchanges. So as I said, that's now happening in UK, Ontario, Canada, already has last year, Singapore and it's coming for wherever you live. They're considering best how best to register and regulate platforms where the trading of securities and non-securities is intertwined. Determine whether it would be appropriate to segregate out custody, where it'd be appropriate to segregate out market making functions. Wow, you got like five levels of regulation there. <laughs> this is crazy. All right, let's get on to the next article. There's, there's five here. Okay, this one came out last week, I believe. April 4th. So, I, okay, so this came out April 4th. I just did a search for this. This is another big one. SEC CFT Crypto. Just go into the news tab under Google, and you'll get a bunch of articles like this. So this is from Coindesk.com. Gensler says exploring shared role with the CFTC over crypto platforms. So the two... Regulators, SEC and the CFTC, which is a Commodity Futures Trading Commission, okay, and the SEC, which do all the securities for stocks, uh, are, 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 are working together on this. So let's dig in this one. Um, they want to know how to split crypto trading platforms between SEC and regulator U.S. commodities I've asked, this is, this is the guy, Gensler, I've asked staff to work with Commodity Futures Trading Commission on how we might 
jointly address such platforms that trade both crypto security tokens and some commodity tokens. Okay, a good one for commodity is Pax G. Okay, like that's that's gold. Um, and this is really re recent. So today's crypto trading suggesting neither agency could act as a rule watchdog on these venues. So that, that's now going to include um, all the big ones. Crypto.com, FXCM, sorry not FXCM, uh, FTX, Kraken, Coinbase, all those. Chairman shared his customary suspicions at the conference which focused on the future of crypto. So the stuff going on in Miami right now is irrelevant. This is what you should be paying attention to because this becomes law of the land. Um, lots of innovation but plenty of hype. Next article. Bitcoin.com SEC cha Chair Hent this is now 15 hours ago. SEC Chair Hent uh, Gensler asked staff to collaborate with CFTC on regulating crypto exchanges. So you got to remember, I always thought that Kraken, Coinbase were already regulated, but they're just registered. Oh, this is so bad. Um, SEC's remit is overseeing capital markets, three-part mission, protecting investors. <laughs> no, protecting special interests is the better way to put it. CME comes to mind. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Facilitating capital formation, of course, for the top 1%. And maintaining fair, orderly, and efficient markets for the 1%. Because you have to do the pay-to-play, right? SEC is concerned about regulating platforms, stable coins, and crypto coins. No reason to treat the crypto market differently than just different technologies used. We should be technology neutral. Um... Okay. Oh man, this is so bad. I, I do think this is the this, this is a death knell for a lot of altcoins, alternative coins out there. Here you go. Uh, SEC had many times that many tokens on platforms that have 50, 100, or even 5,000. Those are usually the Asian based. Listed are likely securities, he said. His predecessor, Jay Clinton, said it. I will reiterate it. Without prejudging any one token, most crypto tokens are investment contracts under the Howey test. So there you go. That's how it works in the freest country in the world called the USA. Um, so these uh, uh, senators, Kristen Gillibrand, Cynthia Loomis, they're entered broad-based regulatory framework for crypto. Now, Loomis is the interesting one to watch because she's the one in Wyoming that are setting up these crypto banks. So that's going to be the interesting one to watch. Um, it's pretty clear to me those are commodities. So there's the argument. Okay, here you go. When you look at Bitcoin and Ethereum in particular, it's pretty clear to me those are commodities. And that's probably true, and I do believe that that Gensler of, of the SEC said the same because they're not owned by a central authority. They may be owned by a trust, um, quote unquote trust, but they're not for profit. Whereas a, 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 a corporation like, like Ripple is about profit. So now at the same time they own uh, and control XRP, right? Um, next article. <laughs> like I said, this is big news, but nobody's, I don't know if people are talking about it or anything. Okay, next one. This is CryptoPotato.com. U.S. SEC partner with the CFT on crypto regulations. Um, let me just look for anything new. So the CFTC and the SEC will work together to supervise the operations of digital asset trading venues so here we go sec regulates the securities market stocks and i guess what other defined as a security cftc regulates commodities and derivatives 
Um, so, at, so Gensler advocated for further protection for those dealing with the asset class. These crypto platforms play similar roles to those of traditional regulated exchanges. Thus, investors should be protected in the same way. I'm sorry. Uh, what was that about retail forex brokers? <clears throat> right? Um, or casinos is a better option as well in Vegas. Sure, they're regulated, but you know they're still controlled and owned by uh, uh, corporations in, in uh, Nevada. Additionally, compare crypto trading, crypto platforms to alternative trading systems. Oh, here we go again with the alternative trading systems, which are used in equity and fixed income markets. Those got to be regulated in the freest country in the world. The latter are used mainly by institutional, while exchanges have millions and sometimes tens of millions of retail customers directly and buying and selling on the platform without going through a broker. That's that's really targeted towards Coinbase. But I, I think Crypto.com and, and uh, FTX would easily fall in. And I mean, Kraken may have 100,000s. Um, now, he also touched on uh, stable coins. Uh, to treat crypto currency trading venues more like retail exchanges. Official touched on stable coins. They really don't like stable coins. It's such a threat to the US dollar and the Federal Reserve. They don't like that. He argued that many, okay, here we go again, many criminals employ the products in their illegal operations. And they also employ US dollar cash in their illegal operations. You cannot get around that. They'll find ways to get around that. So don't blame all crypto, sh all, all the honest people should be punished because like 4% of the criminals use it. Uh, when you ban, ca oh, oh, I'm sorry, they, they will ban cash with this new centrally, uh, central bank uh, digital currency in the near future. Crypto to crypto transactions allow users to skirt the traditional banking system. Skirt the traditional banking system. Yeah, that's the whole point of it. Making it harder to track money laundering, taxes, and compliance. Folks, start watching Nomad Capitalist. Move out. <laughs> Get out. Get out of the West. I mean, I understand the regulation um, part of it, which I'll get into with the CME and what I'm going to do about it, but there, there, there's a balance here. Gensler added that Washington's have long had super supervised financial markets in an effective way. He wrote, raised the hopes that trend will continue with the crypto industry. We ought to apply these same protections to the crypto markets. Let's not risk undermining 90 years of security laws and create some regulatory arbitrage or loophole. Oh, that's so bad, dude. That is so bad. Bad, 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 bad. Special interest again. Wall Street special interest. This guy's a clown. Simple as that. Um, okay, so we know about the executive order from Biden. Um, first ever executive order on digital assets, long awaited directive. Came food for thought for many prominent individuals and government officials, including Gensler. He looks for colleagues across the government to accomplish certain goals in the sector. Similar to the White House stance, he outlined customers' protection safeguarding against illicit activities as priorities. Oh my God. Talk about hypocrites. It's like the, the, the lunatics running the asylum. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Okay, so we got one other one here. So let's talk about this. You have two choices if, if you don't like this. You either get out of the West, okay, places like Dubai, uh, probably the Caribbean, Latin, Central America, will boom because of this, okay? They will boom, okay? And, and other parts in Asia throughout as well, okay, as they get more and more crypto friendly. Europe, UK, North America, Canada, US, Australia, and probably New Zealand, all the big five countries, big five I, get out. If this is bothering you, get out. Move. Don't be regulated to death by this or uh, 
for tax. Okay, I'm doing it, so should you. Now, if you're stuck, like I am for a little while, your only option, your only option really, because I do think this will be the death of alternative altcoins. Either they'll be regulated to death or they'll be either driven out by volume. Lack of volume means they fall by the wayside. Good examples of that is Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash. I mean, you look at coin market cap and you look for where market cap is for like Litecoin. XRP is still up in the top 10. Cardano is still in the top 10. Um, Solano, okay, or Solana, I always say Solano. Um, okay, but then when you start looking for other coins, okay, um, Litecoin, number 21, eight billion dollars. That's all that's been traded. Oh, I'm sorry. So the the vault the the market cap is this eight billion dollars. That's it. Not even a billion of, of, has been traded on Litecoin. This used to be like the third biggest coin a few years ago. Look at Chainlink. Same thing. Worse. Um, and Bitcoin Cash. This was the biggest alternative to both Ethereum and Bitcoin. And look at it's seven seven billion, and not even traded um, five billion. Okay, um, so, and look at look at Uniswap. It's fallen off too. So a lot of these coins will come and go, but you can't really make predictable trades out of it. I mean, if I showed you my trading record, you'd be convinced. So a lot of these coins will will come and go, like penny stocks. You don't know which one's going to move, and it's you're going to be uh, swimming against the tide. You want you want to be able to predict uh, predictable trading. So what do you do about it? Well, you've already known my stance about anything Binance related. Um, Binance, I, I will say I like with potential, but you have to be careful of them because they're definitely part of a, a criminal element to it, okay? Um, that's why they won't sign up and register in Ontario, Canada, okay? Because once they do that, then they put their neck in the noose of the hangman if they do that and still go against how they register. That's why they ran away like little bitches that they are. Okay, but still, there's still potential here. You have BNB the coin, you can see it's number four. I've tried the BSC, BNB smart chain. I don't like it, it's too proprietary. I just don't like it. Um, it just it just gives me the heebie-jeebies, that, that network. So um, you have all the stable coins and so all of these will fall by the wayside. I really do think so. Uh, how fast, I don't know, but the volumes are there. You, you know the market conditions are not favorable. So what do we do? Okay, so here's what I'm looking at. And I've been, I've been talking about this for a long, long time. When you go under exchanges, you look at a spot versus the derivatives market. Look at uh, Binance. Now remember, Binance owns this, so you can't really um, take this too seriously. Uh, but Binance at 26 billion, okay? This is irrelevant, just so you know. It doesn't really affect your trading, okay? It makes your particular little coins more liquid, but it doesn't matter. You can't fight against trends. Anyways, uh, so you have Binance here, Coinbase, and FTX. But the one to really pay attention to is this one, uh, Binance, okay? Binance, 26 billion, go under derivatives, now look at the volume. It's now 80 billion over a 24 hour period. So what am I saying? That uh, roughly, just roughly, for every dollar put into the spot market on Binance, there's pretty close to $4 being put into the derivatives market. Okay, so that's where the volume is. It's in futures, it's in uh, options, okay? So when you start looking at these numbers, these are relevant, but the idea here is I just wanna talk trend. Trend, okay, very important. So we know that futures is where the real volume is in. And when you look at DEC, the digital, uh, sorry, the decentral, the DYDX is doing really well. So these have done fairly well, okay? 
But the problem with this one, they can lock. If I if I can still legally trade on Binance, I don't trust them. I could be legally locked out of my account. Okay, Coinbase is a complete joke. Okay, it is a complete bastardized joke. Okay, this Armstrong, the founder, he's like the dude over at um, the uh, Vlad or whatever his name is at, at Robinhood. Just stay away. Okay, just just they're just shysters. Then you move into um, Kraken. Now, I like Kraken. Kraken's very honest, like they're getting a bank. If I had to choose an exchange, US-based, without a doubt it'd be Kraken. But you can see the volume's very low. One billion, not much. But when you look at the Kraken volume for uh, futures, I mean, look, look how far you gotta go. I, 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 I've already, oh, there you go. 13 million dollars. <laughs> Like, seriously? <laughs> so, this is what we're, we're, what we're up against, okay? DYD, uh, DYDX, the Decentral, 3 billion. That's an impressive number, and I believe it. But I've done some research. I've reported them on my Monday night webinar. Basically, you have to be very careful of them. They can lock you out at any time. If you decide to uh, log in to your account on DYD, using your VPN, they'll block you permanently. And again, you'll lose your money. I'm assuming too high risk, very high risk, not worth it. So what are our alternatives? Well, just so you know, and again, this is from my Monday night webinar. Um, let me show you something. These are big developments, okay? So the CME, even though now I'm talking about regulation, if we're going to be having all of this regulation against us if you're staying in the West, and you're gonna have all this regulation against you. I do believe. Um, so if you look, I do believe you, this is this is your best route. Okay. So if you look at uh, this this new news. Okay. So the CME uh, just brought out a week ago. Uh, CME uh, CME group to offer micro Bitcoin and either options. Now, again, when you go back to, to, to um, the world of traditional crypto exchanges, we know them, uh, especially in the derivatives market, and I'm speaking with my own experience with back, let, let's say two years ago, or even a year ago with Kraken, uh, not, I'd say 90, 95% of that volume is either for Ethereum or for Bitcoin. So when you look at uh, this news item right here, if you know all you're going to be working with is Bitcoin and Ethereum, then you're you're okay, okay? Because you're going to pick up 90% of the volume and work on crypto-related trading like a future, like an option um, in a heavily regulated uh, exchange. Well, it's the number one Wall Street picked uh, exchange, so you're now working with the devil, which is okay, um, as long as you stay in, in the world of of uh, crypto, namely Bitcoin and Ethereum only. Forget everything else. So at the same time, you can build out and work in other diversified um, future and option instruments. So as the market starts to tank, which it will and has been. Um, you're still safe. Like I, like I've shown you in past videos, like like different uh, different uh, trading baskets that generate like 100, 200, 300 percent annually. So playing in this space is really where the next um, uh, generational wealth will come from. Not these small exchanges anymore. Why? Because you know the big bad Wall Street people, the puppets are now coming after the little exchanges, okay? And they'll they'll be they'll, within 6 months a year from now, once these are these new laws are implemented, I can guarantee you that this these exchanges if you're still in the west will not be the same. Okay? You will not have the same advantage you have with what you have today. So, the only way to get around that is by being on the CME, okay? And be able to trade derivative products, futures and options uh, on the CME because hey, Wall Street 
the government loves the CME. So you're safe from that point of view. And as I said, you're also working in other assets and instruments in traditional futures market. So that's the logic I'm going with. All right. So, yeah. So now when I say if they're going to treat Bitcoin and Ethereum as a future and as an option, no different than gold or oil contracts, that's a good thing. Okay. And eventually, the institutional will, institutional volume will end up here, with Bitcoin and Ethereum. Now, okay, everyone's gonna go about, oh, but oh, my old coin project, what am I gonna do? Okay, this is what's happening right now. So, Solano and Cardano, right here. So this article right here, from the blockcrypto.com. This was also announced last week. April 1st, okay? CME Group is considering altcoin futures on Solano and Cardano. So basically it just said, look, it's um, enough market demand for it. So what I'm saying is even though we could sit here and say you got Bitcoin and Ethereum, okay? Bitcoin and Ethereum, they may start to add what they consider are legitimate altcoins. So the first round would be Cardano and Solano. Solana, <laughs> but the other ones are not. So it'll be at the discussion of CMD to determine probably working in conjunction with the SEC and the CFTC to say, yes, this coin is legit and will be added to the CME. So that's probably where it's gonna go. Now in terms of um, global volume, I still think these exchanges will exist. For sure, Binance, without a doubt. Binance will always be there. Maybe Coinbase, but it'll be radically different than what we were used to. And I think a lot of these other exchanges will either fall by the wayside or still do their questionable thing in terms of, I'll give you an example. Uh, we know Coinbase is useless in so many bad ways. Um, and their commissions are too high. Binance, as I said, I do believe it has got criminal elements going on there. Just look at what I said about the Russian invasion with uh, Ukraine. And they are in Dubai now, okay? So Dubai is good and bad. Dubai for the crypto industry is awesome, but there's gonna be a lot, a lot of criminal con artists, scammers going on over there in Dubai and pushing that out to the rest of the world. So if you're able to, to know what exchanges and other whatever crypto innovations come out of, and you know which ones are uh, innovative and are honest and can actually be traded on, do it. But also for, don't forget, if they don't have the proper security in place, a good example is the AXS hack. Uh, if you've not heard about this, this was the, a big one. So AXS, Axie Infinity, losing users. Why? Um, because of a $601 million hack. So that's what you could also potentially get into when you start to move into other, uh, other areas of crypto, crypto land, innovations, whatever you want to call it. So you're gonna have all those forces against you, okay? And this is where you go, okay, maybe regulation might not be so bad if you wanna get serious and be able to go from a couple of grand to 50 grand or 100 grand, and that's a lot of money for a lot of people. At least you know, at least you know, good or bad, no matter how you look at it, because I'm mixed on this. If you're on the CME, for sure there's gonna be no hacks. Let, tell me the last time there, the CME got hacked. Okay, and then those regulars and they're insured, so you're protected. Okay, so that's good. Um, and you still get the volumes, and you don't have to worry about getting regulated to death on your favorite pet project, alternative coin. All right, so that's what I'm gonna say, leave it at that. I know where I'm gonna go, and as I said, this is the direction I'm gonna go. CME, futures and options with Bitcoin, Ethereum, and good for me if they add on other altcoins like Solano and Cardano. Okay, let's leave it at that. Um, 
enough of the rant, I guess. Call it whatever you want. If you want to know more about what I'm doing, okay, just go to quantlabs.net slash contact this page right here <clears throat> um, and get in on this because this, this is this is a big deal. Um, the amount of regulation that has come about in the last, um, I would say, month, two months is absolutely mind-numbingly fast-paced. Okay, and from a trading perspective, it, it is tough. When you have the coins that have dropped as they have just in the last 24 hours, you know, 4%, 5% for Bitcoin, okay, um, what I will say is that um, Bitcoin is now tied back to the performance of other, I think Bloomberg said they trade like a, uh, a tech stock, which is true. Okay, and this is all due to now tied back to what the Fed's doing about reducing their $90 billion spend each month. So not just the markets tank, but Bitcoin and the rest of the crypto tanks. You can see all the red there. So that's not good. It's not where it used to be with crypto, where you used to get a very good mix of coins that uh, moved against that. It's like when Bitcoin does something, which will react to what goes on in the market, macroeconomic-wise, uh, everything else tanks. So that's not good. <laughs> but you can still take advantage of being on the CME by doing the shorts and all the traditional futures way of trading and 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 options and it's it's easier as well being with the micro okay micro options i believe how it works is and this is what i'm trying to get confirmation from so-called interactive brokers i'll do another video on that but um as far as i know i'm waiting to get confirmation of it so if you're on a future for for either bitcoin or ethereum the future is one tenth of the market price of uh, of um, of either Bitcoin or Bitcoin or Ethereum. Okay, so that's the future price, one tenth the market price. For the option, it's one one hundredth. Okay, so I'm trying to find out what are the minimum contract sizes of both on the CME. Um, so that's what I'm trying to get confirmation of because this is this is a brand new because it's just came out like April 1st and it's only five days after that. So I'm just trying to get confirmation from a broker on that, specifically what I would have thought interactive brokers. So um, well, I'm gonna do another video on that, but um, that's where we're at. Okay, so I'm gonna shut up now. But again, if you want to know more, just go to quantlabs.net slash contact and sign up. All right, so we'll talk to you later. Thanks. Have a good day.